Hey, what's up, team? It's Sherman here from geekpsychology.com. Uh, today we're talking about the ESFP. Um, so before we get into it, let me just explain the whole situation, the whole setup that I use to understand your mental wiring. So um, within this whole Jungian psychology, MBTI and stuff like that, um, you have different factors at work within your brain. Okay, and this is... Um, for us, we're going to split it into four different components. You have your dominant function. Okay, this is where you have this compulsion to live. You, you can't fight it. It's just what you naturally do and how you access the world. Then your auxiliary function, which is kind of the, the support. A lot of people call it that. It's a, another way of orienting yourself. Um, so in, in this case, for you, it's going to be being introverted and subjective and thinking about um, how things were in the past and whatnot. Um, and it's also, for you, a way of making decisions. And we'll get into it, too. But um, after that is your tertiary function, technically. And that is just another way of making decisions for you, but it's not as, um, it's not as trusted. I guess, or trustworthy, let's say it like that, um, as your auxiliary function. It's just you don't have as much experience with it. And it's not as uh, leveled up and whatnot. And then after that is your fourth function, your inferior or aspirational function. And that is kind of where a lot of your, your struggles come from when you're growing up. And then uh, eventually you kind of learn to cope with it and, and use it aspiration aspirationally <laughs> I don't know um, just as a, a way to motivate you to look at the world in a different light um, and then it kind of makes up for some of your weak points so I've um, kind of reskinned all those those archetypes there to be like RPG characters in this four member like adventuring system and that's what we're gonna talk about today so your first function your dominant function um, I call this your hero this is your class. This is um, just your, your main style. This is you in this adventuring party. And for you, it's extroverted sensing, technically. Um, I consider it to be like this um, offensive or dwarf berserker warrior. You know, you got two hammers or whatever kind of weapons you want, and you just run out there and you uh, swing at stuff, and you, you get really close to it, getting that melee range and just grab a hold of it right see what the things are actually made of and um technically you know you're you're it's extroverted sensing so it's the sensory things that you can pick up in the outer world um and this is you know like sight smell sound taste all that stuff too and also you know heat or just little measurements and stuff like that um, stuff that I am <laughs> very bad at. And uh, it's very here and now, in the moment, um, as you would imagine a berserker would be. You know, he's not thinking too far into the future about, you know, what are the repercussions of these actions. He's like, I need to get this done. I'm going to run in there. I'm going to just start beating things up. And, you know, everybody else, you follow me. And um, it's very in tune with bodily sensations, um, both your, your own and other people's, um, just because you focus on it so much, right? You're going to pick up that information very easily. It's kind of one of your superpowers, right? Um, so let's see. Yeah, let's look at some skills. Uh, close combat specialist. Awards extra swings, so the more interactive a warrior is with an object, the more they understand it. Right, very kinesthetic, hands-on, like I said. Um, yeah, I mean, this is just kind of stereotypes, but you're not going to want to theorize about some stuff for too long before you actually get your hands on it and see what it is, right? It's like taking a picture of something or looking at a picture of something right this is what it actually is compared to 
um, an abstract drawing of it or a painting of it or something like that. You know, it's real time, what it is, all the senses involved, you know, anything that you can get a real clue of like how this thing actually exists in the environment. Um, awareness, scan for important sensory details in the environment. So you're always looking around you, your, your brain, your neocortex is actually primed to just kind of like bounce back and forth. Uh, Dario Nardi calls it a tennis hop, right? And so it's just, you're always primed to take that quick initiative and take a step out there and just start attacking, right? Um, and if you're an ESFP or an ESTP, you know, you probably know that to be very true. You know, you're going to be more entertained. Um, you're going to be more easy. Let's see, how can I word this? You can focus better if there's just a little bit of action in the environment, right? You're looking out a window, there's, you know, a squirrel running by. That's going to help relieve a lot of your stress because your brain is looking for something to do, something to multitask and focus on. And so that helps. And that's where awareness comes from. Uh, lightning reflexes, re ready yourself to react instantly, just kind of what I talked about. Weapon mastery, quickly attune yourself to new tools. Uh, skilled warriors are gifted with machines and tools which they see as extensions of their bodies. Um, this is another kind of stereotype, but a lot of stereotypes have some truth to them. So it's, you know, you're very comfortable with using things to and, and manipulating them as tools okay uh, this could be like flying a plane or something like that swinging a hammer whatever it is you know uh, building something you know that's really my ESFP friend loves to build like shelves and TV stands and whatever he can little crafts right uh, and he's very good at it he can just see the the wood and all these tools as extensions of his body and he knows exactly where to put them and place them and whatnot um here and now warriors are hands-on and learn best through action and personal experience yeah you know i explained it you got to run in there you got to see what a thing is um hands-on first person right Charge, warriors don't have time to plan. In fact, by the time they think about planning, they're already mid-swing. Yeah. Uh, again, my ESFP friend always is like, uh, let's call him C, okay? He's like, tomorrow C is going to be very angry with today C because he does something, he knows it's a bad choice, but he just can't control himself. He's just like, this is what I want to do right now. This is going to give me the most stimulation and adrenaline and all that sensory goodness and feedback. Um, and tomorrow he can deal with the repercussions after he can deal with the repercussions. Um, I think that's good. Yeah, that's good. <clears throat> um, let's see, anything else about extroverted sensing? I think that's it for now. So, you're not in this adventure alone, right? You need support. A lone berserker is not going to, to beat the game and slay all these dragons and whatnot. Um, he needs some heals, in your case. <clears throat> and those heals come from your auxiliary function. This is your companion in the system that I use. And it's, it's like Samwise and Frodo. Right? It's just, it's a dude that's there to help you out and help you accomplish your goals. And he's necessary, right? Sometimes you fight, sometimes you, you don't want to listen to him, but it's very important. And technically for you, it's introverted feeling. And what that's all about is your past and understanding your past through how, how you feel about it, how you felt in situations, and then kind of compiling all that emotional and value-based data and your feelings and whatnot into the structure that 
you do not disobey. You don't want to like ignore it, right? It's just got all this representation of what you are as a person. And you use that to make your decisions. Feeling and thinking are decision-making functions. They're judging functions. Um, so in this case, how you make most of your decisions, um, at least your, your really good ones, um, are through what happened in your past, how you understand that to affect you as your identity, right? And yeah, so you just use that to make your decisions. And you know, if, if it goes against the group, that's how it is, right? Because you're not gonna be untrue to yourself. Um, and I consider this to be like a defensive or elf priest, okay? They're all about shielding, kind of like a disciplined priest in World of Warcraft. Um, shielding, protecting, you know, keeping enemies away, one-on-one um, -on -one heals uh, through like identifying with the individual is that would be technically like um, empathy and yeah so it's a very slow decision-making function because it has to access all this past information and think about it and you know go into your feelings and stuff like that and be like you know I I disagree with this. I'm not going to do it. I don't care what you say. These are my convictions. Or, you know, in the other way, like this is who I am. This is what I'm going to do. This is where I'm going in my life and you can't stop me, right? Full on um, aggression when you know exactly what you want. Um, but the problem is, is that as a dwarf berserker. I know not everybody wants to be called a dwarf or an elf, but it's easy for the uh, the metaphors to come out and the symbolism and whatnot. As a dwarf berserker, uh, you have your own culture, you have your way of life, you know, you want to explore and expand out and just seek this big breadth of um, well, tangible interactions and details and sensory information. But um, elves are chill. <laughs> they want to, you know, just go along with life and react to things instead of like be proactive necessarily. And, um, they do this thing called reverie. So it's kind of like sleep. It's this dreamlike state. And this is where, um, they relive past experiences. That's what introverted functions do and introverts do a lot of the time. Um, and they speak elven or elvish or whatever you want to call it. I haven't been able to find the correct pronunciation or the correct word, I guess. Um, so it's kind of difficult to speak to the elf as a dwarf, right? Because they're slow. You're just like, hurry up, let's do this. I'm bored. I'm impatient. <laughs> let's let's go right and the elf he the priest is just like mm, let's think about it a little bit more is this really what we want to do I don't know you know how did it work out in the past well this time it was like this and this time it was like this so mm, you know I don't know if I really feel like that and the berserker just runs out there it's like screw it Leroy Jenkins let's go um, and this is when you turn to your tertiary function your newbie in this system and it's another decision making function and it's a dwarf right it's extroverted thinking technically so it's like a dwarf mage or a geomancer and it's very quick decisions right now what can i do what decision can i make to make a step forward and then we can test it out and see how it works you know and then we can go to the next step and then the next step, and then the next step. It's very step-oriented, like I just said. And it's about empirical evidence as well. Like, what can everybody see? Um, and how can I use that to make a decision? So, like, charts and graphs and, like, 
numbers, data, stuff like that. Um, but it's not your best function. It's not at the same level as your hero and your companion. So if those are like level 30, it's like a level 10. All right, so it has a feel, it has an understanding of how the game works, um, but it just doesn't have as much experience as the other ones. It doesn't know exactly you know, how this boss fight works. When do I need to collect the poison and dash out of this thing and, you know, move around? Um, so that causes some issues with making correct decisions, right? Because it just wants to make quick, efficient, or effective decisions and see what happens. And that works really well um, with, your, with your mindset as this berserker, this dwarf warrior, right? Because you want quick feedback as well. You know, how, how much can you understand about the environment? Just take it all in, right? And so those sound like they work out really well together, but uh, if you don't have any subjective understanding, you don't introspect, then you don't really learn from your past mistakes, right? You don't learn from what happened or past successes, right? You're just constantly going, you know, without control. And uh, that's not good, right? You need to, to step back and understand things. And um, let's see. Yeah, yeah, so that, that Geomancer, like, it seems like he can make the right choice a lot of times just because it feels good, right? But uh, be careful with it. Don't listen to him all the time. Sure, there are places and times to do it. Um, don't completely ignore the newbie because that's when he's going to cause some problems for you, right? You got to keep your eye on him. And um, when you get really stressed out, one thing you can do is to to, you know, take some quick action, right? Move things around in your environment and, and play around with some stuff and don't sit back and ponder like, oh, does this, is this the right choice? Does this mesh with my convictions and who I am as a person? Like if you're really stressed out, as a quick kind of band-aid for it, just take some action, see how it feels. And then after you can um, introspect about it. Uh, yeah, okay. And next is your inferior function. Your aspirational function is another name for it. And I call it the escort. The escort is like AI. It's, you know, you're on a quest to escort this person, this character. Um, and he's kind of buggy. Doesn't really work out too well all the time. It causes you a lot of issues. And, um, you know, I say get stuck in rocks and stuff. <laughs> um, and for you, it is introverted intuition. So it's the mirror opposite of extroverted sensing, which is your hero function. So what that means is it's another way of perceiving, of learning and gathering information. That's what sensing and intuition is. Um, but it's not looking outside, it's looking inward, right? Intuition is kind of the opposite of sensing. So it's abstract. It's not tangible. It's not like sensory information, right? It's like thinking about where this thing could go, where it came from, um, just details about it, but abstract details, right? how it connects with other things. Um, it's very prophetic in a lot of ways, um, but it's your escort. So you're not going to use it like someone who uses introverted intuition as their, their hero function, right? <laughs> um, like an INFJ or something like that. So, um, I consider this to be like an elf hunter or a sentinel. It's got a bow and arrow, really slow, kind of stalking its prey, slowly filling out the uh, its understanding of the, the territory and whatnot. Um, just slow.
low. One shot, one kill. Um, <laughs> and what it's actually doing is looking at all these different perspectives, kind of swapping back and forth, and trying to figure out where this thing is going by eliminating other options and finding the, the truest path that whatever it is, is is heading towards. And that's kind of also looking through like, um, what is the deep meaning of all this? You know, uh, what are the um, just underlying effects and whatnot? And sorry, uh, I got sick, I have strep throat. Um, and it's, yeah, it's super slow. It's not where you want to be a lot of times. And when you get extremely stressed out, your berserker is just in a pinch, can't, can't do what it wants to do, can't leave this little box of an office that it's in. Um, then you start switching to this sentinel and you're like, you start assuming all these things and theorizing about stuff and like, oh, this person is definitely doing this right now because in my past, one other person did that and it's just like, it's very often negative and assuming that people are um, kind of causing problems for you and whatnot. Um, I'm trying to think of some other information about it. Mm, I, I don't know. I think that's about good. Like when you start panicking and and thinking about how how things are going wrong for you and how you can never change the future and all this stuff like that's that's when you're giving too much control to the escort and you need to make a quick decision using your geomancer your newbie and get you back into your your hero style your flow state and um you know, if you follow the escort's quest, if you give it time, if you, um, you know, don't, don't bring it to the boss fight, but take it out every once in a while. Let him, let him walk around and follow the quest for a bit and you'll, you'll get better at it and you'll be able to trust it more. And the more you can trust like where your actions are going and, and this abstract understanding of how things are interrelated, the better your gut instinct will be when, you, when you're in your hero mode, right? When you're playing sports or whatever, or when you're just, you know, reading body language or what, whatever it is, like using your introverted intuition, um, or accepting it more often is going to help you get better information because you're learning more from another perspective, right? So I think that's about it. This video went a little long, sorry about that, but uh, I hope it was educational. <laughs> um, if you're an ESFP or you know one or just wanna talk about it, whatever it is, uh, in the comments below, please type something up and I will respond and like, share, do whatever you gotta do to help me out here. Thank you very much, and good luck, have fun. See ya.